ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Today's lesson, we are in Arabic today, Arabic class, and excuse me, the complete Arabic course. What's that? No, I don't, I forget sometimes. But what we're on, we're on today, we're dealing with, this is lesson, how was. So wherever, it's, I mean, sorry, hutia. We're in hutia. We did abjad, how was, hutia. So this is the third in the series, or the fourth in the series of the Abjadiyya or master letters, okay? And this is just part one of the um, complete, not um, the complete Arabic course or complete Arabic class where we cover everything. Here we're just dealing with what? The letters, which is the first part of learning the Arabic language, throughout which if you don't have the alphabet, you don't have anything, okay? Because you need the letters. Here we're doing our quiz. And in this quiz, we dealt with Abjadiyya from beginning to again. This is just, again, to reiterate and to make it very strong in the people's mind about the Abjadiyya. Who can recite for me the Abjadiyya from beginning to end? Everyone should be able to do that. Go ahead, Mr. Hakim. Abjad, Hawaz, Qutiyya, Kaliman, Sa'afaz, Qurishat, Thakir, Dagir. Okay. And it's Hutiyya, that Ha, that Ha. Everybody has to go say Ha. It has to come off hard, okay? Ha. ha. So you have abjad hawaz, which is coming from down here. Say hawaz. Hutiya. Kaliman. Sa'fas. Qurishat. Thakhid. Dadig. So we want to practice how to recite that properly because in that are all the letters in the alphabet, okay? In the abjad, we have alif, ba, jim, and dan. Abjad. Yes, ma'am. I could not remember the name, so I just been here to do the, the alphabet. It started with the six greater kings. Okay, you're giving me the history, which is good. That's good. It's no problem. That's why I said the quiz is an open book quiz. You could search in your notes in it, because the whole point with the quiz is to show you what you don't know, to make you remember. That's what it is. It's not to give you a grade, this, that, and the other thing. It's for you to see what you need to spend more time doing. And that's why the reason why these texts are given, primer texts and these poems, so you can have an outline to memorize. Okay? An outline to memorize. And it would be something that we can share with our children and something that the teachers can use to teach the students. Okay? So it's good for everybody. All right? Moving right along, list the 13 sciences. Somebody list them for me. What name one? Sarf, Sarf is one. Nahu. Yes, ma'am. Two? Not Nahu. Yes? Rasmi, that's right. What else? That's the third one. Give me another one. Uh, I'm sorry? Nahu, is that what she said? Yes. Nahu, that's good. We got so now we have three. Let me put them up. So we have, we said Sarf, right? Then we said Nahu, right? Then we said Rasmi. Give me another one. This is one, two, three. We got ten more to go. Al Insha'u. Al Insha'u goes here. Okay, well, we'll go Al Insha'u, right? Go ahead. That's four. What? Balaga. Balaga is out here. Balaga is the name of three sciences. What are the three sciences? That come under Balaga, because that comes to the next. Name the sciences tied to Balaga. Because Balaga is not by, it, it is a title for three sciences. Give it to me. Five, six, seven. Bayan. 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 Okay, say ba yan. Bayan. Not bayan. 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 Say ba fata ba. Everybody. Ba fata ba. So it's bayan. Okay, what's the next one? Badi'u. Badi'u, okay. Give me another one. Ma'ani. 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 Ma'ani, okay. So, there's three. So, give me 
Right here we have 1, 2, 3, that's 5, 6, 7. Now we need 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Qardu shi'r. Here we have qardu ashir. Okay? Which is poetry, right? What's the next? Ain. Ain fata'a. Say it. Ain fata'a. This is going to come back and bite you if you don't practice now saying these letters the way they're supposed to. Ain fata'a. Where is it going to bite you? When you go to Tajweed class and you have to say, A'udhu. And everybody says, A'udhu. It's A'udhu. A'in Dhamma'u. Right? But if you get accustomed to it, you can separate. A'u. Right? As opposed to A'u. So it's A'in Fata'a. Say it. So it's A'rud. A'rud. Ma'am? I'm sorry. A'rud. What's the next one? Qawafi. Let me put it over here since you can't see. Qawafi. Right? What's the next one? Let's get 11. We got three more. Khitaba. Naam? Al Khitaba. That's right. It's the archer speaking on your feet. Irtijal al Raju. It's the someone standing on his two legs speaking. Eloquently and fluently without having to read from a paper or a book. Right? That's khitabah. 12 and 13. Tariq. The history of all of it, right? Tariq. Now what else is there? One, only one thing left. That she's taking up for the ladies today. Mutun. Tabarak Allah, mashallah. We're going to have to put a, a, something up here with some money. And the best student gets to walk away with it every day. That would be great, you know. So, mutun, these, and that's the text. So these are the 13 sciences. We have to get more and more. This is why we have this question constantly. What are the, we're studying Arabic. We need to be more familiar with what the sciences of Arabic are. Okay? So it, becomes, it flows off of us like sweat and our breath is just easy. Right? All right, now, name the sciences tied to Balagha. I answered that. That's right here. Balagha has three sciences, Bayan, Badiru, and Ma'ani. Right? Okay, next week your question is going to be to define these three. I told you all that before, but now I'm going to give it to you again. Three, you got, you got till next week to define what these three mean. You have it in your notes. You don't have to look it up. It's been defined in, in paragraph form in your notes. What you're going to have to do is be able to articulate that. Okay, without confusion. I can't wait till we get to Malaga. This is beautiful, you know. Anyway, list the three sifat or three sifat that do not have opposites. Just three sifat. We're going to go here with this one. Name three. One, two, three. We want three sifat. Safir. Hey, you guys are looking soft today. Safir is the sound of a whistle from Saud, right? So we have Safir, it's that whistling sound. Give me somebody else, give me another Sifat that doesn't have an opposite. Tafashi. Okay. Tafashi. Sorry. Tafashi here is that when you say ish, everybody say ish. 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 It's like the teeth are what? Combs. And the air is blowing through the combs. Ish. Okay, that's how the ulama explained it. And we use that, right? When we go and we have our camels and our goats, we say, shh, 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 shh. Right? So everybody knows that sound. Go ahead. Let me get a third one. Hakeem, you've been quiet, man. What's up? Lean. Lean. Oh, lean. That's a good one. Lean. I like lean, and I like, I'm glad somebody mentioned lean because we're going to deal with it tonight when we deal with yeah. Okay? Lean is a... What I call the diphthong, the ow and the a in the Arabic language, and it's like that in English also. English also distinguishes lean when it's dealing with the letters, the a sound and the ow sound. Okay? So, those are three sifat 
that do not have opposites. Okay. Now, what does dhalaqa mean? Or what does it mean when a letter is said to be dhalaqatan? What does that mean? I've been heard from this side of the room. What's the deal? Que paso, mi hermano? <laughs> that, that's a letter that uh, fly off. That, those are letters that fly off the lips. The mm. letters that are pronounced on the front of the mouth, and letters that are uh, pronounced with fluency. Okay, these are letters of fluency. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fi. They call the letters of fluency. Why? We start off with the greater term. Even though he ended off with that, I started off with saying fluency because people use that term, but we, necessar we don't necessarily know what that means. When we say these are letters of fluency, fluency here in, Arab in the Arabic language means that they fly off the lips. What difference does that make that they fly off the lips? lips meaning that there is nothing blocking their expression, like the la and the ra and the ma and the ba. Okay, these are all off the lips. And so they, they flow. And that, that's why they call it fluency. They flow out without any obstruction, unlike shh, like we just spoke about, because it has to go through the teeth and then through the lips. Okay? So that is a terminology used to describe a type of letter. And not necessarily, it's a sifat, but it describes what that letter is, how it's going about. We're going to start now with our lesson. So you can put the, I forgot to make the, the handouts today. It's on the computer, but I forgot to print it out. I'm running a little crazy today. So you guys have to get it from Hakeem next week. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll just print the whole rest of the alphabet out for you guys and give it to you so you don't have to wait every week to see it, you know? But the, the reason why I didn't want to do that because people start coming to class and not having it and it wastes paper. And then they don't study it anyway. And then we still got to give it out, a new fresh one at the end of the day to somebody else. So hopefully you guys be more responsible than those guys last week. Oh, you guys are the guys last week. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing you guys. Inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll get it together. Yeah, McKean, put it on the board. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We already dealt with Abjad, King Abu Jad, Hawaz. Now we're dealing with Huttia. Everybody say, King Huttia. The Huttia here is a Ta. Huttia. That's why I put it in, in bold letters, the, the, the capitals. So this is a Ha Ta Ya. Say Ha Ta Ya. Ha. ha, no, no ha. 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 ha, 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 ha. Remember, this is Arabic. Nobody can say, "Well, I can't say that." Yes, you can. Drop your jaw. Say ha, ha. Ta. 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 Ya. Ya. Huttia. 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 So now we're gonna go through, and what is huttia? It's ha, ta, ya. So say abjad. How was? Huttia. Kaliman. Sa'fas. Urishat. Thakhid. Dadig. And see, so, you know, we have a, a lot of problems in pronunciation sometimes, but it only takes a little bit of time to work through those things. A lot of the African brothers, I'm going to pick on them today. If they say sa instead of tha, we don't have to say that. We can say tha. 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 Say thakhid. Tha. Tha. Right. So all it takes is us working on it. Okay? All it takes is working on it and being conscious. And the reason why we have to be conscious because it is the speech of Allah. Right? It's the speech of Allah, what we're dealing with. The Qur'an in Arabic is the reason we're learning it, so we can know the Qur'an first and foremost, and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us. So let's go up. It says, Ha. If I say it, say it. Ha. Hamsun rikhun istifal. The ha, it comes along with fat, and then with something, it's up the throat, the middle part, so you won't choke, with idhar every afternoon. Aha! The eighth numeric rule. Okay? So, everybody say, aha! aha. 
No, not aha. 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 And we do it, get loud. You can, you can say, aha. Nah, say it like that. Get involved with it, and you'll, you'll get it. Okay? I read an interesting thing at one of the schools. I think it was this week. It said, if you teach me, I might forget. If you show me, I might remember. If you involve me, then I'll, I'll, I'll know it or something like that. I, I forget. But basically, I like the idea. You get involved with it. You work with it. Then it's yours. You know, it's an experience. You know? So, say, aha! No, take your hands and say, aha! Right. Come on, yeah, but Muhammad. Aha! <laughs> okay. Alhamdulillah. Some of us want to feel silly, but it's okay. You know, we're going to let it. Hamsun rikhwan istifal. The ha, it comes along with fat. And then with something it's up the throat. The middle part so you won't choke. Okay, now stop right here. What this is doing here, it's giving you the sifat of ha. Say ha. ha. So hamsun, what is hamsun? Hamsun is whispering. Everybody whispers. So say ha. ha. Say ih. Ar-Rahman. You hear that? It whispers. You can't stop it from spilling. That's why it says rikhun. We're learning rikhun. It's that weakness. It goes, it's so like jello that once you put it in your mouth, it spills all over the place, right? Say, ah. And let it come out, right? Say, ha. Hu. He. He says, going across. It's going across. So it says, istifal. Where is your tongue when you say ha? So that's what istifal is. Istifal is to keep your tongue what? Flat. So say again, hu. He. And when you do it, you open your mouth sideways. He. Say ha. So we know we got that fat in there. You got to open your mouth, right? And keep that tongue right. The ha, it comes along with? Fat. And then with sump. What's sump? Restraint. Why? And here it doesn't necessarily mean restraint in that context. It means control. Why? Because it's from the middle of the throat. Say hamzun. Do like this. Say hamzun. Faha'un. Thumma aynun. Ha'un. You see that? That ha is in the middle part. It comes from the middle of your throat. And then he says, Muhammadani thumma ghain. Say ghain. Point to it. So ghain. Kha. You see that? That's the last part of your throat. It's not in your mouth. That's not your mouth. That's your throat. The back, right down under where the throat is just ending. Say ra. Kha. Now say ha. Ah. It's under that. So that's why it says the middle part. It says so we won't choke you because it's not, it's just joking so that you can rise with throat. Joke, cho- I mean throat choke sounds similar. So it's just to complete the, the, uh, the bait. So here you learn two things. You learn all the sifat of the letter ha and you learn also where it is articulated from. And like I said, you don't know this thing till you know it. There ain't no figuring out. Either you know or you don't know. And you can't say you're producing the sound if you don't know from where it's produced, where it comes from. Where is it produced, Mr. Hakim? The, not your throat, not just the throat. Where? The middle of the throat. There you go. The middle of the throat. So where's the, we did already uh, the alif, the hamza. Where's the hamza? Deep. Deep in part. It's the deepest part, right? And we need to know these things, okay, so that we can say, ah, say, ah, ah. sit up, ah. ah, you can feel it when you sit up, ah, ah. open your mouth, ah, ah. and it's, the sound emerges from deep down and pops out your mouth. Now say, ha, ah. ah. it's not down deep like, ah, say, ah, ah. ha, ah. you see, in the middle here, it twists and pushes it out, say, you can feel it if you say, ah, now say ha. ha. 
You see how your, your body, your diaphragm twists right in there? Your diaphragm is right here, right under your seventh rib, right under here. So you say, ha, and it pushes that air out. Okay? That's what's going on there. So, then it goes on with idhar every afternoon. What do you think we're talking about here? With idhar. What is idhar? It's tajweed rule. Are we practicing tajweed here? Not necessarily. No. So we're not going to get into it so deeply as far as what the rule of idhar is. You'll learn it when you go to tajweed. But what you do need to know here is that the tajweed rule for ha is what? Idhar. idhar. Okay? It's idhar. It's to come again when we study more about the language. It'll come again when we study tajweed. But here we're just becoming familiar with the tajweed aspects of the letter. Then we say, aha! The eighth numeric rule. So, ha is the eighth numeric rule. So now we got it. Aha! Now I got it. You know, we say in English, or not in English, every language, we say, aha! Got you! Right? Aha! That's the sound of ha. And it is the eighth numeric rule. So, the number value for ha is eight. Okay? Having said that, let's move right along. It says ta. The next letter is ta. Everybody say ta. Ta. Look here at my mouth. See, I have my mouth there. Say ta. Ta. Your tongue comes up. It hits the, 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 the back part where the gums are, and it, and it punches. Say ta. And here it goes. Ta. It presses, bends, and pulls away. Ta. You see that? Ta. See, the sound is coming back like that, right? Ta. It's not going ta. It's going ta. Say it again. Say ta. Ta. You see how it's going away, making a sound? You think the sound's going to come by hitting, but it's going ta. Say it again. Say ta. You press your, 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 your tongue. It bends forward, and then it pulls away with, with strength. And you make your mouth what? It's there. We haven't even got to the poem. But this is what it does, right? Say again. Practice it. See, because the only thing we have to do now is be conscious of what we're doing. We may be already pronouncing all the letters correctly, but we may not be conscious of it. And what we want to be here is conscious of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to press your tongue up on, a, on that. On a, on, this is your top teeth. These are your teeth, and this is your gums. Okay? So you're going to press it up there. The tongue's going to bend, the top part's going to bend, and you're going to pull away with strength. And at the same time, your mouth is going to be round, oval, like an egg on its side. Right? So now you're going to go, ba. Say it. Ba. 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 That's what you're doing. Now, what we're doing, it says here, at the roots of two top teeth, when the tip and top tongue meet, the letter Tha is getting warm, the ninth haruf in our form. Okay? And you see all these T's? At the roots of two top teeth. Two top teeth. Say that. Two, two top teeth. teeth. When the tip and top tongue meet. The reason why it's done this way is so you can practice that T sound. You know, it's, it's all it is. Now, the only thing different is the sifat. How to, now you know the makhraj. The makhraj is separate from the sifat. Because you can say ba or you can say ta. Say ta. Drop your tongue in it. Drop your tongue down flat and open your mouth fetch like this. Say ta. And now it scratches. Ta. Instead of going back, you're going down, ripping. Say ta. Ta. Like you're doing a match, right? You ever strike a match? You know, not that you smoke weed or nothing like that, but some people strike a match to light a candle. And they go like that, right? <laughs> Stuck for loud, but you say ta, say it. Now say ta. They got the same makhraj. It's just what happens at the makhraj is different, right? What you're doing at that particular place is different. One you scratch down, the other one you press and pull back, and you make your mouth round. The other one you make your mouth like a doorway. Fat. So here we say at the roots of two top teeth when the Tip and top tongue meet. They meet what? With the top of the gums. The gums where they meet the top, the, the, the teeth. That's where they meet. Like I said, this is the gums, this is the tooth. 
So they meet right there. All, through, all four of those places are meeting. The letter Ta is getting warm, the ninth huruf. So now we know it's the ninth letter, right? The ninth letter, and its numeric vowel is nine. Just like aha, the eighth numeric rule, the letter nine is getting, I mean, the, the ninth huruf in our form is the letter Ta. Now we're going to get to the sifat. Then it says, with shidda jahrun isti'la. Oh, we have isti'la this time. I don't think we, we covered isti'la. Then it says, with shidda jahrun, say ta. Press and pull. Ta. 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 That's what shidda. You're pulling away with shidda. You're not pressing. Because remember, just because they have the same sifat, it doesn't mean it's practiced the same way. Here we're not striking with shidda. Here we're pulling away with shidda. So you go ta. And at the same time, jahrun, you blow the air out as you pull back. Ta. And it's ti'la. We raise it up. The sound is rising. Ta. You see that? It's ti'la, the raising, the a'la of the sound. Okay? It's ti'la. The letter ta has qalqala. Qalqala is that when you say, you know, that i'ta. I'ta amu. You know, that, it, see that, that thought, it bounces, it resounds. It's like beating a drum and boom. It bounces, say, Ipa. Ipa. So it has like half of a sound coming afterwards. Okay? So that's the qalqala. And then with something, close it back. Well, it says close it back to let you know that it's back is to close. So you say, Ta. You see, my mouth goes down like that. Ta. 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 Ta, ta, ta. This is how the sound comes. And the sumpt is that control. You don't go ta. You hold it. Ta. Ta. You should have air held in your nose. Say ta. ta. Now you notice it? Notice the air that you have in your nose. That is the, that is the, the, the sump that we're referring to right here. The restraint and the control. Your nose is subconsciously controlling the sound. Of thaw. Say thaw. Thaw. Don't you feel it in your nose now? The nose has stopped the air from flowing out of it, from seeping out through here, because that would change the sound. Okay? So that's what that we're referring to when we say as sump, the sump there, the restraint there, the control there is here. Okay? In the khishum, in the nose. And it back is that rounding of the mouth. Okay? Now, and when reciting, bring ikhfa. What is ikhfa? Ikhfa is the tajweed rule. Okay? So we know that ha, what's its tajweed rule? Idha. And fa, its tajweed rule is what? Ikhfa. And we'll get more and more familiar. That's so why I tell you guys, memorize, memorize, memorize. Get familiar with this text. It's not here just to, you know, okay, we know the letters now. But here, it's there for you not to just know it, but for you to... To flow with it and to use it as a reference so that when you get to other places, you can use this text. And when you want to teach something, you again, you have the outline. I know I'm being redundant. I'm saying it over and over again. So maybe you hear me. Okay. Maybe one time you were dream sleeping through in the class and now you hear it again and again. Say, oh, wow. Okay. We, don't, we can use this for that and another thing. Moving right along, we have yeah. The open space inside my mouth is the place that ya is pronounced. With incomplete idgham, the tool for ya, the tenth numeric rule. Then jahrun ikhwun istifal, the ya must come right after fat. For us to ani up the lean, jahrun and shidda must be, fathun and samtun must be seen. I said jahrun and shidda. Fathun, what does it say? Fathun and samtun must be seen. Now this letter, we have to take it and pay a little bit more attention to it. Everybody say ya. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What a lot of people do with this sound, they say ya, ya. That's incorrect. Okay. So the first thing you have to remember when you're reciting, when you're making this letter, you have to say yeah, yeah. And why do you? How can you bring that? Looking at the sifat. The sifat has fat, and fat is to open your mouth in which manner? Like a doorway or like or close like an egg? Which one? Like a doorway. So the mouth is to be opened up and down. Go up. Say, yeah. Yeah. When you do that, that is impossible for you to say, y'all. You know what I mean? Because you, you, y'all comes from ikbal. Making, right. We, we become sensitive to that. Say, yeah. Yeah. You have to almost smile. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is how the sound goes. Now, if you want to know where the yeah comes from, where the letter yeah comes from, it's the open space inside my mouth is the place that yeah is pronounced. Why do we, we don't, we don't go to a specific place, so we learn automatically that how many types of makhraj are there? There are two types of makhraj. We know our business. We know this alphabet, right? We're not new to this. We true to this. We know the alphabet, and we know there's two types of makhraj. One you can put your finger on like that. Everybody say ib. Put your finger on the makhraj right there. Say id. id. Go out and, and you can touch the del, the place of del. Now say a. a. Where's the makhraj? Can you put your finger on it? Now you stick your whole hand in your mouth, right? So, because the open space inside your mouth is the place that yes yeah pronounced. Say a. 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 Yeah. yeah. It's not on any particular place, it's in the air. It's floating right above. If you could open your mouth and go to the side and above and right in the middle, then maybe you can touch something. Say, A. 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 Yeah. yeah. You hear it vibrating right above your tongue? Say, Yeah. yeah. No, say, Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you're using the yeah twice there. When you do that, you can feel the yeah hovering right above the, t the tongue. Right above the meaty middle part of the tongue, say, e yeah. yeah. And it takes the wetness that's on the tongue and it bubbles it. It bubbles it and then pushes the sound out. Say, e yeah. yeah. Keep it sideways. E yeah. yeah. That's how you find the makhraj. That's how you know with specificity, very specifically, where the makhraj is. Don't click your fingers, guys. Prophet said between the salah when you're waiting for the salah. Nah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, so the open space inside my mouth, and I like saying my mouth because it goes to the yeah position again, is the place that yeah is pronounced with incomplete idgham, the two for yeah, the tenth numeric rule. Now we know yeah is the tenth numeric rule. We said incomplete idgham. Wow, we're getting real stuck for Allah. Subhanallah. We're getting very detailed about this tajweed stuff. Because the, the Tajweed rule for ya yeah is incomplete idram. What did I say? Incomplete idram. What does that mean? Not going to tell you. But you need to become familiar with the term so that when you go to Tajweed and you hear incomplete idram again, it's not the first time you heard it. You know it. You're familiar with it. And that's the first step in learning, being familiar with something. Then you get more familiar with something. And then you know it like a poet. Okay? You know it. So it's stair-stepped. You don't need to know everything all at one time. What you need to know is that incomplete idram is the tajweed rule for what? Yeah, the tenth numeric rule. So we know, yeah, the numeric value of yeah is what? Yeah, Aba Muhammad, ten, right? Okay, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Then we go on now to the next. So we got the makhraj, then we have the tajweed rule and the numeric value. The next thing that we're going to have here is some of the sifat, actually all the sifat. But in between that, we're going to have lean. Huh. Lean is right in the middle of all of that. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to read this, this line of poetry right here. Let me get my red pen out. I know we only have a few minutes left. It says, then jahrun rikhwun istifal. This is tajweed. This is the... Sifat has five sifat that are asli, that are always going to be there. Jahrun, rikhwun, istifal, fathun, and samtun. Okay? Let's go over those right quickly. Jahrun is loud. What is jahrun? Loud. 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 Audibility. You raise that sound out. I talk loud naturally. Some people have to, you know, fabricate. But do what you got to do. It shouldn't be a big fabricate. Fabrication in reciting and all that stuff is ugly. But you do it with practice. Practice, it comes off natural. Loud. Rikhwun. Again, ya spills all over the mouth. When he says the open space inside my mouth is the place that ya is pronounced, it's telling you it's all over the place. It can't be controlled, so it has rikhwun. You know, called weakness, but rikhwun. We know it's spilling. Istifal. Say ya. Yeah. 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 So the flatness of your tongue is flat. Put your tongue in the air and go, go, You can't even make the sound with your tongue up. So it has to be flat. I'm going fast because the Islam is about the Islam is about to call it. Fetchun. You have to open that mouth fat or you're gonna go yaw. If you if you yawn, you know, it's yaw. But if you do fat, 
And that's the y'all is with the itbaq. When you do fat, it's yeah. yeah. Give me a big smile. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> like they do. So something is control. Okay, we always have to control letters and not let them get out of hand. Okay? So here is a consciousness. When you say yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not letting it, the, the hair come. You're not letting the yeah. yeah. That's where you come with the something at that point. The restraint is you're keeping the sound from flowing into a hair or a hair at the end of it. Say yeah. 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 Everybody's looking to go now. Okay, so... Let's stop here, and I'm going to go and say, the yeah must come right after fat for us to ante up the lean. Here we're talking about a rule. The rule starts here. The yeah must come right after a fat ha. Here we mean a fat ha. Okay? A fat ha for us to ante up the lean. Here's a play on word. Lean here is we mean the word lean. Okay? We mean the construction that is the A sound. We say a fat ha. And a yeah makes the a sound in Arabic. Okay? We have a fata and a. So you, you would say a. a. Right? So that's called lean in Arabic. It's not a rule unless, the, I mean, it's not a part of yeah unless it comes with a fata before it. That's why in the poem it says the yeah must come right after fat for us to ante up the lean. Ante up means paying up. You know, you pay that vig when you're paying up in, 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 in the, the river situation or loan shark, you have to ante up, do your portion to pay it. So in order for it to equal up to lean, and they call that the lean that they got on you, you know, they lean on you for money or whatever the case is. Here, it's just a play with words to say that in order for it to meet the, the, the rules for lean, it has to have the yeah must come after a fatah. If the yeah does not come after a fatha, it is not considered to be in a state of lean. Okay? Let me say that again. When the yeah does not come after a fatha, directly after a fatha, then it is not considered in a state called lean. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yeah, we finished now. Alhamdulillah. نعم أنا ساتي الآن إن شاء الله